Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head over to America once again and we're going to look at another brewery who I have never tried anything from before. I always enjoy introducing new breweries to you here on the channel. And this is one that I think we will be seeing a little bit more of over here in Europe. And it's also a style of beer that I really, really enjoy, but we don't get too many of them over here actually. It's definitely a style that is more common over on the American West Coast. So for this review, then we are going to go out to California on the west coast, Los Angeles to be specific, or Inglewood, and we're having a look at my first beer from Three Weavers Brewing Company. So this one is the Bloods Junkie, and it's an Imperial Radio coming in at 8.7% ABV. And just look at the artwork on that, it's absolutely satanic, I love it, absolutely love it. Huge metal head, so you know, this one is right up my street. If this beer um, would have lasted, I probably would have kept this for review number 2000. 666 but you know as an imperial radio it's kind of similar to an IPA so you know it isn't going to last that long actually if it had been an imperial stout or something like that then I probably would have kept it for it uh, for that special review but yeah I'm really looking forward to trying this one as I've told you before I absolutely love radios especially the imperial reds and uh, I just wish I could get more of them to review so do give me some suggestions of radios and imperial reds that I can review in the uh, in the comment section below because uh, this is not a style you find too often over here in Europe so your recommendations would be muchly appreciated but hopefully I can get out to the American West Coast at some time and try some more examples of these but really looking forward to trying my first beer from Three Weavers and as always I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well. I'm sure Blood Junkie will be a really nice introduction to this brewery. And we got this one here in Sweden through one of the small parties, the Tilfeld Sortiment, I believe it might have been on the 3rd of uh, March 2020 that we got this beer actually, or was it the 13th? Of March 2020. It was one of these, the two um, Tilfelid sortiments, or three Tilfelid sortiments actually, but one of the earlier two that we're getting in March of 2020 through C. Stimbolaga here in Sweden. So let's see how we go. But yeah, as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I'll do in the future from Three Weavers Brewing Company. Very first time I'm trying one of their beers as I mentioned. Hopefully not the last. There's all the usual social media down there as well. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefetch, or whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the American beers that I've reviewed for you. That's being added to whenever I get the opportunity, which is fairly regularly. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Three Weavers Brewing Company then, on to my brewery notes. So Three Weavers Brewing Company, as I mentioned to you earlier, are based in Inglewood, just outside of Los Angeles in California, and the company was founded back in 2013 by Lynn Weaver. So she apparently started home brewing in her house just as a hobby when she was looking after her young children, just, you know, to kind of keep herself occupied and she really just fell in love with it and wanted later on to you know she enjoyed the whole social aspect of beer and things like that and she wanted to create a community around beer she said and um, but later on she wanted to go back to work and she started to investigate and um, how to turn her hobby into a business and she attended several conferences on the craft beer industry but she had also studied business previously and worked as a financial planner and also as a tax consultant so she had a really good business footing actually to get this kind of business up and running off the ground. So Lynn founded the company officially back in 2013 and they got the brewery up and running in 2014. She brought Alexandra Noel on board as her brewmaster. She apparently had studied brewing science for extra credit at university because she just thought it sounded interesting. But she worked as an intern designing a training program at Sierra Nevada and then she went on to brew for Moylan Brewery in Oakland and then for the Kinetic Brewing Company 
on the edge of the Mojave Desert as well. But she met Lynn apparently through a brewing supplies company and they really just hit it off straight away. And Lynn was, lo was uh, looking to recruit a brewmaster to join the company and it was just the ideal match. But over the years the two of them have worked together, they've continually expanded the capacity of the brewery. By 2018 they were apparently producing 12,000 barrels per year and then in 2018 they also joined the Canarchy Partnership as well which includes Cigar City, Oscar Blues and a few others. So I think this is the reason why we're starting to get some of the three weaver stuff over here in Europe because uh, you know since uh, we always used to get uh, Oscar Blues but uh, we never used to get Cigar City as easily as we do now so I think now that these guys have joined this sort of alliance if you like we will start to see more of their beers over here too which is great obviously I do like the fact that we're getting more West Coast beers now as well um, but they've got plans to take their brewery capacity up to 45,000 barrels per year that's the maximum capacity they'll get out of their building that they have and as of March 2020 when I'm filming this review for you they've produced around 120 different types of beers apparently the name Three Weavers comes from uh, the fact that Lynn has three daughters and she said that she set up the company basically to show them uh, that you know if with a little bit of hard well not a little bit of a hard work or with a lot of hard work you can really make something out of nothing and she said it was very important to her to uh, to kind of show her kids that you know with hard work and graft you will be able to build something like this actually so well uh, yeah very very cool but like I said this is my first encounter with three weavers and um, there's a few of their beers are very well regarded there's one of the IPAs uh, I forget the name of it now but there's one of the IPAs I read was very it was supposed to be very very good so hopefully we get that over here uh, in see Stimbolaga at some point and I can review that for you as well actually so um yeah that's all you really need to know about three weavers brewing company for the moment if you want to learn more of course you can check out the brewery website you can follow them on Facebook Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and if you're interested in those 120 different beers that they've done you can check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to see all the different things that are available. So um, yeah, like, like I say, interesting brewery this one and hopefully not the last beer that I try from them. So to tell you a little bit about the beer itself, I put a, a note on the hops and malts here too. Like I said, this one is an 8.7% Imperial Red Ale. It's hot with Mosaic, Equinox, Chinook and Simcoe. It has an, an, a malt base of English Crystal Malts. And this one, from what I gather, was originally brewed back in 2014 as a collaboration with Prosthetic Records, who I think are a metal... Uh, you know, a heavy metal record company actually. I'd never heard of them. I think, you know, the ones that I always know from the States would be Metal Blade. But over here in Europe, we've got like Frontiers, um, Spine Farm, we have Nuclear Blast, AFM, um, well, who's the other big one from Germany? Uh, Napalm Records, uh, they're Austrian rather. So we've got our own metal. Uh, metal labels and stuff over here which have a lot of the, the famous European bands if you like but they've got lots of different metal uh, labels over there in the States too but um, yeah let's get on with this one and see how we and see how we go so as you can see this one is one of these um, American pint cans I think this is 473 milliliters in real people measurements is one US pint so this one is a nice big 473 milliliter can and as I say, the artwork on this is absolutely beautiful. I'll definitely be keeping a hold of this can. Just look how awesome and satanic and oh, and devilish that is. I absolutely love that. Um, you know, I'm a big into my uh, my heavy metal, of course. So the whole satanic thing, I find it quite funny and interesting. But yeah, I will definitely be keeping hold of this can. Um, it tells you in the back about you know the the collaboration with this one. It's a ruby hued imperial red ale, eight point seven percent. It's not the heaviest. Um, radio that I've come across right enough but I'm sure at 8.7% you're sort of bordering on the, the double IPA territory in fact no, in fairness you probably are into the double IPA sort of category because this you know the Imperial Red Ale I'm not quite clear on what exactly is the difference between an Imperial Red and uh, an Imperial Red IPA it's probably just hop content right enough but there's some awesome hops in this one so we know Mosaic is well known for its sort of tangerine oranges Equinaut is a big limey thing and then Simcoe is the passion fruit one, and Chinook, as we know, is the big kind of beast of a bittering hop. So I think this beer will be really interesting. But let's just see how we go with it. Um, look at the copper colour of that. That is awesome. Um, yeah, this one is a proper... I've had some Imperial Reds, and um, one thing I've never really found out about this style is you do f sometimes find uh, the Red Ales called the American Amber 
as well. And I've never found out whether um, there is a bit of a distinctive difference between those actually. I think they are fairly similar, just there's different colours of malt and lengths of boil and things like that that distinguishes them. But look at this, this looks absolutely beautiful. If I shine the light through this, this one's got a lovely kind of chestnutty type colour to it. Um, it's definitely more chestnutty than ruby, it's almost a little got a little bit of a kind of copper tint to it as well. You can see that there's a solid finger, you can see that there's a solid finger and a half of a frothy um, kind of light beige creamy tan head. There's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones heading up towards the uh, the bottom of that head there but you know overall it looks very nice and this beer is actually really nice and clear actually I like how this one um, I really like how this goes together this is a lovely um, looking beer this one so yeah definitely within the realms of possibility for an imperial red and you can smell some of this lovely fruity quality coming out of the beer so let's take a closer look at that aroma then and just see how we get on with this one. Oh yeah um, you know, one of the things, I think my first encounter with the Imperial Reds, it might have actually been um, the first blood. I've mentioned this beer so many times in videos, I really want to get a bottle of that to review it. But it was a beer called First Blood from uh, Eight Wire Brewing Company down in New Zealand. And I tried it on tap in a bar in, uh, in Auckland. And, you know, it's one of these ones that's just always stuck with me. And then since then, I just always wanted to try pretty much any radio that I came across. Um, and this one really, um, it really just kind of hits the spot almost. If I was blind smelling this, I would perhaps think there's a wee bit of cascade in here. Because there's a few of the sort of telltale signs of cascade, but it didn't say on the website whether there was cascade in this as a bittering hop or something. I'm not sure if the hops I mentioned, the Simcoe, um, Equinox, Chinook and Mosaic. I'm not sure if they are added later on in the boil just for the flavour and aroma and things. But there is something that tells me there might be a wee bit of uh, cascade in there. But in fairness, Chinook is just like a kind of... Uh, it, Chinook is a little bit like cascade on steroids in fairness. Similar flavours and profiles and stuff. But the aroma of this beer is absolutely lovely. So you can smell a little bit of the bready base in this one. You've got a lot of that kind of McVitie's digestive biscuity sort of thing. Or we should say cookie because this is an American beer. Um, but yeah, it's got that lovely kind of McVitie's digestive biscuity sort of thing to it. There's definitely some sweeter caramel to this too. Um, yeah, there's definitely a bit of that sweet caramel in there. And it's got a wee bit of a kind of slightly woody undertone to it. But that's quite minimal. It's mainly, you know... You can smell the pale malty, white bready sort of thing. It's almost got a little bit of a kind of brown bready hint to it as well. But like I say, sweet caramel in the middle, a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a sort of uh, McVitie's digestive biscuit sort of thing. And then you've got the hoppy side of this beer. And these hops that are in here will behave a bit differently because of the malt base. You know, when you add Simcoe into a black IPA, it will give you some lovely sort of reddish berry fruits. But if it's on its own in a, in a sort of white malt base, if you can call it that, um, it always gives you passion fruit and things. So these hops are going to behave differently when you've got a more brown sugary orientated malt base. So, yeah. And um, on the fruity side of things, the oranges, the tangerine oranges are definitely there. That'll be the mosaic coming out. Um, you do get a little bit. There is a little bit of a limey quality to this one, in fairness. The equinot is coming out for me. And there's quite a bit of a red fruity character, which I think will be the Chinook. And to a degree, it will be the Simcoe as well. Because I'm guessing the Simcoe will behave similar, uh, similarly to how it does in a black IPA with this. With the, the, the more brown sugary and slightly darker malt base. So yeah, there's a little bit of a kind of, um, it's not, it's almost like black currenty figgy, um, it's not quite berryish. it's definitely more of a kind of candy, it's got a little bit of a candied strawberry, candied figgy sort of thing, and, uh, and other stuff um, going on with it. So yeah, it's a really interesting um, aroma that comes out of this. It's, well, it's really well balanced between the malty side of things and the fruity side of things. Uh, on the green side of the hops there is a wee bit of a floral character to this one. Not really a darker piney resin but you've also got a little bit of a kind of grassy kind of quality to it as well. But I mean overall um, it's a really nice smelling beer. This one is pretty much what you would expect for an imperial red if you know the style. Um, but I think in Sweden as I say this is not one of the more 
well known beer styles if you like. I've had one or two examples from Swedish breweries but this is not such a common beer style but one that I personally really really like. So let's not leave it any longer. Take a bit of time and enjoy the aroma. This one's some lovely big oily fruits to this like I said and you've got that nice kind of typical malt base. But let's have a taste of this then and see how we get on. This one is the Bloods Junkie an 8.7% Imperial Red from Three Weavers Brewing in Inglewood near Los Angeles over in California. Slanger, Skull. That's nice. That is really quite nice, actually. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm going to say thumbs up to Three Weavers on this one. This is definitely one of these beers where it takes your mouth just a little bit of time to sort of adjust to it. But this is really quite nice. And it's interesting because, you know, for quite a wee while we hadn't had any um, red ales or anything like this, but in the same lot that, say, Stimble Lager released, we also had... Um, you know, we also had the, the Lucky 13 from Lagunitas, which was another very, very nice radio. And um, so, yeah, I don't know why we get two in the one. We don't get them for ages, and then we get two in the one lot, actually. But, you know, if, if anyone from Sustainable Lager is watching, please bring more of these in. These are awesome beers. But, yeah, that's really nice. Let's get the rest of it in the glass. This is one of these beers that I will definitely enjoy myself. Usually I share uh, the beers out, but this is one that I'm definitely going to be enjoying myself. I love my, I'm a bit selfish when it comes to the Imperial Radios, as I am with my smoked beers. You know, they're mine when I get these. Um, but yeah, this is lovely. Let's try and break down the flavour a little bit more. So yeah. Uh, in the middle of your palate, then, you can feel that nice kind of bready base to the beer. That just blankets the uh, the middle of the tongue. And um, it's that crystal malt giving you, I'm sure it was Brit, they said they put English crystal malt in this one. And it gives you that lovely smoothness, sort of brown bready notes, a little bit of a white bready quality in there. In the very centre of the palate, you've got a thicker um, caramelly note. And it's it's not quite oily. It, it's not the, the, this isn't the most oily of Imperial Reds that I've come across. In fairness, that strikes me as being a little bit more sort of drinkable than the, the Lucky 13 from Lagunitas was, but in fairness, I think the Lucky 13 was, that, that was, I think that was around 10%. That was a bit heavier than this one, in fairness. But, um, yeah, I mean, this one has a nice, it has, it almost just drinks like a, like a red double IPA, to be honest with you, but a lighter double IPA. Um, but the full, it, it, it feels lighter in its mouth, in its uh, in its mouth feel, but it has all the flavour you'd expect of the style. So that's the interesting kind of quirk about this beer for me. So yeah, as I say, that pale, that sort of pale malty, crystally malt, malty base there it gives you that nice impression of like a a light sort of white, maybe not white bread, a sort of white light brown bread you really get that across the um the middle of the palate which is which is nice if you go to the very center of the tongue you get the nice kind of um you get that big thicker kind of boozy caramelly note out the beer it's quite a dark brown sugar actually that's in this one but as you come further out from the center of the palate it gets a wee bit more biscuity but i would say the biscuity flavors are a little bit more kind of minimal in this it's, it's more like a big boozy brown sugar and then you've got the the brown bready notes kind of taken over most of the palate there but at the same time there's a bit of an oily character in there as well if you go to the front corners of the palate and then move in a little bit you've also got a wee bit of a woody uh, note underneath and uh, on those front corners of the palate as well so that's an interesting point about this one too but i will say this one is um this is a really solid imperial radial it's not the the, the sweetest one that you're going to come across i mean it strikes me if I was blind tasting this, I would. It's not quite as sweet as some of the Imperial Reds you're going to come across either. Come to think of it, but um, I think if I was blind tasting this, I would probably guess that it was more of an IPA than a, than an Imperial Red. But again, it's it's to do with the malt content. Usually, with an Imperial Red, you, you it would be a little bit more 
kind of thicker and sweeter in its malty notes. This is more, I think this is a bit more like a red IPA. But I mean, we can sit and argue about styles all day. The question should be whether it's a good beer or not. And it certainly is. That's the main thing to take away here. So let's look at the hoppy side of this beer then. So, back corners of the palate, you get a wee bit of earthiness there. That'll be the mosaic that's giving you that. To some extent, it'll be the Chinook too. But I've always found mosaic gives you that little bit of earthiness. But as you come further forward along the side of the palate there, you can feel you do it quickly comes out and you start to get some of those dank kind of resiny notes you'd expect of Chinook. Remember, Chinook is that big sort of pine resiny, grapefruity type hop. You definitely get a little bit of that there, but as you reach the front corners of the palate, it's a little bit more kind of floral and spicy, and then round the front curve of the tongue, that's when you get the lighter, more um, kind of grassy notes out of this one, which is good. So yeah, I really like how um, I really like how this one um, goes together in that regard as well. The fruity side of this beer is nice. Round the front curve of the palate, as I say, it's just a little bit lighter and grassy. Then you get all these big fruity esters out of this one, just in that oily bubble behind the front curve of the palate. That's where these juicy fruity esters just roll out of the beer. So if you go to the back of that oily bubble there, you get a bit of that darker grapefruity note that you would expect of uh, of Chinook. And there is just something in my head that, there's something in here that reminds me of Cascade for some reason. I do I do wonder if there's a bit of Cascade in this as a bittering hop or something. One of my local breweries back home in Scotland, they've got um, a Cascade hopped Pilsner beer, the Shehalian Harveston Brewery. And that's a sort of go-to sessionable beer. I really, really like that one. Um, and I love the Cascade hop that you get out of that. And there's just something about this beer that makes me say Cascade. But as I say, when you come further forward from that darker grapefruity note, um, this beer, it very quickly starts to lean towards um, a sort of big oily orangey note. And it's interesting that because normally when it comes to the more oily orangey flavours, you would think Amarillo. But they've gone for mosaic in here for the orangey side of it, and it, it works really well. It feels a little bit lighter and not quite as thick as Amarillo would. But the tangerine, the lighter tangerine notes you get out of this are really very nice. As you push further forward on the tongue, you do start to get a little bit of the limey character from the Equinot. And I think the Simcoe in this one, you know, the Simcoe is going to give you some of these little red fruity flavours and stuff. And when you concentrate on the front of your palate, as you go further into the aftertaste, you will get a little bit of a you know, slightly kind of figgy, candied fruit note out of this beer. So I think that's where the Simcoe's coming out with this one. Yeah, I would stick with that. I think it's the, the, the Simcoe and the sort of red fruity notes that it will give you in this uh, one are coming out there. In fairness, you know, when I think about the Chinook, the Chinook is quite dark and it's grapefruit, but you might still get a bit of that kind of passion fruity note from Simcoe in this one. But I mean, overall, this is a really nice um, take on the Imperial Red. I mean, in terms of its flavour, I really like this one. It's got the slightly orangey notes you'd expect. It's got a, a bit of the kind of hoppy darkness you would want, especially from a West Coast type beer. Um, and it's got the malt base. The malt base isn't quite as thick as some of the ones and, and sweet as I've had from others, but um, I certainly do quite like this one actually. So um, yeah, big thumbs up to Three Weavers for this one. This is a really nice Imperial Red actually. I do need to try more examples of these of this style because it's one that I really enjoy, but as I say, we don't get too many of them over here in Europe. Um, in terms of the mouthfeel then, um, this beer is sort of top end of mid-bodied, bottom end of full-bodied. It's kind of around there. Carbonation is very smooth. The mouthfeel overall is pretty oily, but like I said, this is not the thickest and most oily Imperial Red you'll come across. In terms of hoppy bitterness, we must be talking 60 or 70 IBUs at least for this one. It does have a good little bit of that um, kind of big hoppy dankness to it, which is great. Um, there's some nice oily fruits and a little bit of juiciness in there, um, and you've also got a kind of smooth and sweet malt base as well, actually. Um, the malt base in this one, as I say, not quite as thick and oily as you'll get from some in this style bracket, but I really like how this um, 
how this goes together. So yeah, thumbs up to uh, three weavers for this one. This one was the Blood Junkie um, Imperial Red, 8.7% from three weavers in Inglewood in Los Angeles over in California and America. Awesome to try this beer, really nice introduction to this brewery and I hope that you guys have enjoyed my take on this one as well. I do hope we get more Imperial Reds through the Tilfelid sortiment in, uh, in sustainable Lagat. So, yeah, let's leave it at that. Once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Three Weavers as well. And I'm sure we'll be returning to these guys at some point fairly soon. Until the next time, slander just now. Check out my social media. Check out Three Weavers Brewing Company. And I'll catch you guys later. The Imperial Red uh, Blood Junkie from Three Weavers, Inglewood, Los Angeles County, California, America. Slander, school, cheers.